this is Mike Aspel. In Margate, it's hog time. And for you at home, it's viewing time. We shall be bringing you some of the many requests you holidaymakers have sent in. And the first comes from Mrs Healy of Birmingham. Dear Michael, can we see all those marvellous beaches where we had so much fun? Well, all right, Mrs Healy, for you and two million other people who visit Margate every year, here they are. Nine miles of glorious golden sands, just waiting to be played on, laid on, dug up, built up, marooned on, or even buried on. Well, so long as you don't forget where you've buried her. If you feel like stretching your legs, well, that's good too, but you'll need to get a move on if you're going to cover the whole nine-mile seafront before breakfast. Have you noticed just how clean these sands are? The perfect place for children to play. Right in the centre of Margate are the marine sands, by reputation one of Britain's holiday playgrounds, and certainly the place for every member of the family. The water is shallow enough to allow the kids complete freedom to do just as they wish. And now a card from someone in Luton who wants to know whether we've got plenty of deck chairs. Plenty? We've got thousands of them. Of course, during the holiday season they get pretty full up. But no need to worry, there's plenty of space. Sit back and soak up the sun. This really is just the place to laze around and let the children off the lead. You know, I wouldn't mind slipping down there for a while myself. Ah, oh, yes, this is the life. Mrs. Jones, now there's an unusual name, and from South Wales as well, she writes that she's seen Margate advertised as the five-in-one resort and wants to know if it's worth coming. Mrs. Jones, if you lived in Australia, it would still be worth the trip, and there really are five-in-one. Apart from Margate itself, there's Cliftonville, with its wide promenades, attractive flower gardens, and large expanses of sand and blue waters. Westbrook is an ideal family rendezvous where you can hire your own chalet or beach tent. At Westgate-on-Sea, there are two bays, St Mildred's and West Bay, both offering a peaceful seaside atmosphere. And only a mile or two from Margate is the charming old world town of Birchington. You'll find a walk along the grass-covered cliff tops is very refreshing. Now here's a very nice postcard from an elderly lady in Devon. Dear Michael, can I see the lovely gardens which I do miss so much? Well, of course you can, and here they are. In the 350 acres of parks and gardens, there are no less than a quarter of a million flowers and shrubs. I shouldn't want to weed that lot. I don't know, a dandelion from a daisy. But for anyone who does, this is a horticultural paradise. And all the hard work that goes into preparing these displays reaps its reward in the pleasure given to thousands of holidaymakers who come each year to enjoy the masses of colourful blooms. I suppose it's the sun that brings them out. These two, which will please a, a fellow called Ron from the Midlands, who says, show us some skin. Well, if you want a skin show, there's plenty of it around, all gorgeously tanned too. It's been proved over a period of some 30 years that Margate has enjoyed the sunniest, driest weather of any British resort. It's at top of the sun parade, if you'll pardon the phrase. Now, speaking of parades, how about this? For family entertainment, Margate has a very wide variety featuring some well-known international artists. Whether your choice is a Wild West atmosphere or the excitement of All In, it's all go. But as Mr Thompson of Ipswich says, if you want to go it alone, there's absolutely everything. It would take weeks to see it all, but if you can tear yourself away, we'll take a short sightsee. For children, there's always something special about animals, whether they're large or small. Uh, the animals, I mean. Down at the mini zoo, there's quite an assortment of birds and small animals. And keep your eye out for these. They're part of Safari Park, right in the centre of Margate. But don't get too close, though. The 
sorry we're cheating. We're now in part of the famous Powell Cotton Museum, which is truly worth a visit. There are dozens of life-size animals here set in natural surroundings. On the other hand, the dolphins are very much alive. You know, it takes months of hard work to bring these marvellous creatures up to this high standard of performance. Visitors to the grotto are always intrigued by its mysteries. As Jane Gregg of Uxbridge says, I've been down here several times and I still can't figure it out. Enthusiasts for a sporting life will find plenty to do in Margate. thing I like to do. I never quite seem to have enough time or energy. And this is more like it. You know, there's nothing like a good day's fishing in the fresh air to set a man up for the evening. Especially if he gets a good catch. A slippery little thing. Another wonderful day, the sun is shining my way. The sky is blue. Miss Lucas from Coventry likes dancing, she says. If all you want to do is watch, well, some of the hotels put on local cabaret acts. But all over the resort, there are plenty of places to dance. And if you've got a style of your own, then perhaps a place like the Cavern, down at the Lido, is more in your line. Whichever way it is, it's all good fun, and it's good for the figure too. I should imagine. Show us Screamland, writes Alan, who's only seven. Well, right you are, Alan. Here's Screamland. You mean a dreamland, of course. And that's for me, too. Now it's time to exercise those amazing Aspel muscles. You think I can't do it? Well, how about that? And just one more time. Uh, you really should have a whale of a time here, you know. There's something like 20 acres of fun and amusement for all ages. And you can't beat a cool, refreshing breeze. Preferring a quieter scene, a lady from Dundee writes, couldn't get over Canterbury Cathedral, Michael. Well, I know what you mean, it is a pretty tall building. There are many attractions dotted around Kent. Dover is only 20 miles or so away and has a fine historic castle. There are many historic buildings in this part of the country which provide a backcloth to a very pleasant day's outing. Sandwich is a delightful old town and was one of England's naval bases during the reign of Henry I. Back in Margate, let's blow the cobwebs away with a trip on an open topper. And then it's all changed to a request from a model living in London who likes her air mixed with a fresh salt spray. A change from those stuffy studios, she says. And let's follow this up a little for the benefit of all the tars amongst us. It's uh, all aboard for a trip around the coast. Or alternatively, tous les mondes d'abord for a day trip to France. Now, this is the 1970s way of going to the continent, just a gentle ride across the English Channel. Whilst at the new international hover port, you can also see how less friendly visitors used to arrive on our shores. And now it's time to get on to another of my favourite subjects. Mrs. Kingston, living in Newcastle, writes, Mike, make our mouths water with a reminder of that fabulous food. Well, fabulous it often is, whether it's the meal served in the hotels and guest houses or in a romantic setting for two.
With the wine coming in, there's my signal to bring our show to a stop. But just a quick mention of a request from Ann and Bill, who are getting married in June. Well, Ann and Bill, you can see, if you get the time, there's just plenty of things to see and do in Margate. And if we've not managed to show just what you wanted, why not come and see it all for yourself? Start by sending now to the Information Centre at Margate for a copy of our holiday guide. See you in Margate.